So um, I that's why I like it because it's such a simple activity, right? They're all in the car talking. And that's a lot of the times as a kid, I can say, you witness a lot of interesting things. You make a lot of connections that are long lasting. And you see that with Lou um, when she says, you know, this is the first time you can see it like that Abigail has never heard about um, the discriminations that are being outwardly um, set upon uh, people of color, uh, you know, Latinx, Latin Americans, uh, basically who anybody wasn't white. Um, and didn't, you know, follow suit, right? And they go into that, like even the McCorkles who are, they go into this, but they are a white family as well. They, you know, were at the protests and they are treated terribly. And even, uh, I think it's Lou's mother. She's like, how would you, they treated the white family bad just for protesting. What do you think they do to us? Like, and so you see, just in that conversation alone, the little nuances of the cultural clashes, right? And how a lot of immigrants feel like imposters in American society, right? Because you hear that quote about, and I just, oh, I'll close the book. <laughs> uh, you hear that quote where she's saying you can't fix America's problems, right? She doesn't say our problems. She doesn't say, you know, she says America's problems, right? This is an American problem. This is a westernized problem, right? That just doesn't concern us. We're just here to try to survive. That's the narrative. Um, and so that's why I like that. There's so many different things that you could talk about with a middle school class about perspectives and about cultures and how they can clash. Um, and talking about how, you know, if you meet a kid whose personality clashes with yours, that is kind of a micro or a smaller version of what can happen when two cultures clash and how that can um, not necessarily change meanings when people are two people are trying to communicate, but it can distort the meaning from its original intention that someone might have. And so I liked the simplicity of this um, scene because it allows for complexities to occur within conversations, the dialogue that the characters are having. Um, and again, Lou, the main character, is our eyes. She is the spectator in all of this and watching things happen. Um, later on in the scene, uh, she says she's going to make the empanadas just for her. Big deal, by the way. Again, just going back to a cultural norm, right? Food is so important because food can be scarce. And so to make a special dish just for you, that's a huge deal. That's time she could take to make a dish for her family. That's a time she could, um, and they go on into the scene. I'm going to read it, right? We're going to hear about more about Lou and her family's experience. So. Um, let's see. <clears throat> oh yes, I get the feeling for the first, or that for the once in her life, the cat's got her tongue. A few miles passed before I remember that Abigail didn't get any empanadas. Mama, the empanadas were all gone by the time I, Abigail went through the buffet line. Mama says, don't worry, Abigail, I'll make some just for you. It might take me a while, though, because I have to finish this wedding dress first. Every dollar she earns from this wedding will help her buy a plane ticket to visit our family in Argentina. She and Mrs. Semprero gab about how long it's been since Mama's last trip down there. More than five years. And that's when I noticed Papa's eyes in the rear view smile again. I flopped back against the back seat and breathed easier. So, just from that little part alone, we get a little bit more about their culture, right? So mama, right, their culture, she's not a stay-at-home mom. She is a tradeswoman. She's a woman of trade. She's a seamstress. She's making wedding dresses, and she's probably making wedding dresses, and, um, uh, 
quinceanera dresses for every uh, woman and or daughter, sister, mother in her most likely Spanish Catholic community, most likely. And um, that is how she's going to earn her money so that she can go and see her family because that's her home, not America. Um, and they make that distinction in this scene alone. You know, America's problems, they're not my problems. My home's back in Argentina. She is working her butt off to make dresses just to go fly to see her family. So there you go. Um, so again, that is time that she'd be working on those wedding dresses and making that money. Uh, she's going to go and put some time aside to make epinadas for Abigail, Lou's white friend. So, um, and I like that she, they do this because this is a perfect example, um, of how other cultures have always put themselves to the side in order to please the white perspective. And I know that that's a huge leap from just talking about epinadas. All right. But when you're talking about a person's only connection to their identity and who they are is, um, you know, in Argentina, right? And the only way for her to get back there is to make these dresses. And she is going to put that aside in order to make sure that Abigail could indulge in the empanadas. And so this is a very much a literal demonstration. But it's an important one to make, I feel like, because her mother is going to do that which people expect the mom to do, be self-sacrificing, make the signature dish that she learned how to make when she was a little girl, and, you know, do that instead. And I am not by any means, you know, giving the mother flack. I'm just saying, what a great mom, you know, <laughs> for number one. Uh, and number two, you know, there, once again, it's already ingrained that one culture is dominant over the other. So, and that is that scene from In My Year in the Middle. Um, and this book is phenomenal. Uh, it goes into all kinds of issues uh, similar to the ones that I just touched on. And I only read two pages. So, I mean, there, there's some juicy good stuff in this book. Um, and the one thing that I really enjoy about this book that is appealing probably for many middle schoolers is the chapters are not that long. And so the cool thing that gets to happen is kids are always left with wanting more and they never are going to feel overwhelmed by, um, oh, I, you need to read a chapter a night or you need to read a couple chapters a night. Well, that doesn't feel as overwhelming, as overwhelming. So again, great book. Please read it. It's phenomenal. Um, it's so relevant right now with all the over-politicizing and, uh, you know, we need to love each other and we just need to, you know, show solidarity. And Lou is a great example of that. I love her character. Um, the growth that she does in this is amazing. And she's very relatable. So 